Sometimes you score a touchdown, sometimes you catch a pass, sometimes you intercept the ball, sometimes you make a bunch of tackles, and sometimes you don't. Okay, but we won the game. Okay, and we're never gonna apologize for winning, sticking together. Defense helped the job when he got down in the red zone and on the goal line. Big win! Team on three. One, two, three. Team. the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. I'm Mike Keith welcoming you to the Mike Vrabel Show. Titans three and two after a win at Jacksonville 37 to 19. You said it team win and I think about a guy like Marcus Johnson coming off injured reserve stepping forward and helping Chris Jackson on the goal line. Several guys whose names maybe you don't know quite as well stepped forward and were a part of this victory. Yeah Joe Jones we've talked about him on special teams and kickoff coverage and you know, that's what it's about, and it's, you know, we're, we've got a lot of guys that are active that are going to be ready to play. The guy goes down, you know, Caleb Farley jumped in there when, when Christian Fulton wasn't available, and uh, on and on and on. And, um, you know, that, that's what I appreciate about this football team is there's, uh, there's a lot of ways to get it done, and sometimes it's going to be pretty, and sometimes it's not, not going to be so pretty, but, but they know how to win, and I appreciate that about them. It's also the names you know that came through for the Titans. Let's head to Mike Vrabel's six pack and look at six offensive plays. Start off with the returnee. Great to have AJ Brown back. Yep, it's absolutely great to have him back and his contributions that he made here. I thought this was a well designed play. Um, you know, out of 13 personnel, catch and run. You know, we just need to get uh, the big fella down there finishing uh, and, and trying to get one block that, that'll get him in the end zone. But, but I thought that there was some, some action going on across the middle. Uh, for AJ to, to kind of get lost in the in the trash a little bit and to come out on the other side and you know you see see Derek down there that's that's we got to be able to finish longer than the guy with the ball and um, you know we'll make sure that it happens next time. All right, that was the last play of the first quarter, and so we go to the first play of the second quarter and uh, you know how about Derek Henry? Why not? Here we go. Yeah, I thought that this was a good downhill run. There's Kari leading him in there, Kendall Lamb. You know, getting his guy blocked on the goal line, reporting is eligible. And, uh, you know, that's as close to a walk-in as you can get there. You know, I like to make Derek make it a little bit more emphatic so that we know that we're in there. He's kind of just standing there and, you know, nobody really knows what's going on. But that was, uh, that was an easy run on the goal line. He knew. I, he knew. I don't think anybody else did. I'm he like, knew. did he get in? Derek Henry with seven touchdowns now on the season. Like this one in the second quarter, Titans at the 14-yard line of the Jaguars trying to finish a drive. Tannehill finds the open man, and man, is he open. Well, we, we got out there. We got set. Um, you know, the protection needs to be better on that one. But but Ryan, to his credit, can can avoid and, and give some ground, find a guy uncovered. They had a little bit of, you know, Man free. They were playing man free right there. There was a man, man free. There was a man totally free. And, and that happened to be Prue. So Prue was in the right place at the right time, and Ryan was able to keep his eyes downfield and, and find him. Keeps coming through in big spots, does Michael Pruitt. Second half, Titans leading 24 13. First drive, they get something going right away. Derrick Henry just 31 yards in the first half. Here's a little flip play for 13. Yeah, I thought that this was a good design, a little misdirection. and. You know, you see Quiz out there in front getting some blocks and, you know, just, you know, have mixing up, you know, changing it up and, and getting get, getting him on the edge. You know, um, it, it's not easy, but, uh, you know, I felt like just our persistence, you know, was able to get some, some of those 10 and 12 yard runs there late in the game. All right, so that's the 13 yarder on the flip play to get down to the nine yard line. On that drive, Derrick Henry, seven carries, 42 yards and another touchdown that you'll see now. And man, this is a hole. A straight ahead, no fair dodging. You know, <laughs> they went to uh, they went to split safety 
And uh, there, there's a good block by Ben and Corey on the back side there. And, you know, great deuce on the front side up to the linebacker. And, you know, if we see split safety, you know, we, we've got to lick our chops and we got to get downhill. And that, that's what getting downhill looks like right there. It's 31-19. The Titans get a couple of big fourth quarter stops and then put it away with a short drive. And it's Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. How about three touchdowns on the day? That's it. Straight ahead, no fair dodging. He get back behind Ben. And, uh, you know, the guys are excited, celebrating touchdowns. And as always, you know, there's Ben Jones right there in the middle of it. Um, you know, lays it out there every single uh, day. And, you know, he was a game captain for us on Sunday. So that was, you know, great to see for his efforts. And, you know, those guys up front get, they, they get excited when, when the big fella scores touchdowns. 29 carries, 130 yards, three touchdowns for the Yuli Bulldozer in his homecoming. He continues to play well against the Jaguars and, quite frankly, against everybody else. He leads the NFL in rushing with 640 yards. Don't worry, we did not forget the defense. A special three pack of defensive plays when we come back on the Mike Rachel Show. Stay tuned. Mike Rabel says it's way too much offense. You cannot ignore the defense. We had to look long and hard for some of these, though. No, we didn't. They did some good things defensively. I mean, third play of the ball game. Let's take a Great look play. at this. This is fantastic. More of this. More. More of this More right of this. here. We're going to show it from 74 different angles. Here we go. I love it. You Dan know, Arnold is the receiver. You know, just enough pressure to get him step up and, and trying to check it down and get off the field. You know what I mean? And go punt. And, you know, Elijah triggers and, you know, we just got to quit celebrating and go block. And Kevin runs hard and takes care of the football. And, you know, I think that's a great way to start every game. I think we should script that in every game. And, you know, third and long, quarterback sees coverage and steps up and just trying to get it checked down. And, you know, one of those bang, bang, catch, you know, control, two steps, football move and ball out. And, you know, the big thing there is clear recovery and not, you know, let them make a call. And I felt like that was what we did. And it was great to see. Well, a couple of things impressive there. First of all, even if he catches it, holds it, because of the pressure, they're not going to get a first down. You're going to get off the field. Then Molden steps in in a situation where you wanted him to be physical. He comes in, he does it, and then Byard has the presence of mind to not only recover but get up and get north and south. Yep, finish to the you know I mean to the recovery of the ball. Don't don't worry about the whistle or anything like that. And you know some really good running right there. Just get north and south, make a couple cuts, protect the football, and. You know, end up in the end zone. How about some Harold Landry love? Let's love have, to. Let's have some right here. Landry leading the team in sacks, trying to do it for the third year in a row. He has two of them on Sunday. Let's watch this one. Well, it was a big play here on third and one, and, you know, really good coverage out there on the edge. They're, they're looking for the double slants, and, you know, we, we, we jumped, David Long jumped in front of the one and, and made him, you know, pull it back. And when that happens, you know, the pressure's got to get there. So you can see him staring it down, doesn't want to throw an interception. And then there's Harold winning, uh, getting some push in the middle there with Danico, and and it, we just got to get the football at one of these times. And I know that Harold's going to get it out of there. And you know David's excited for him, and guys are celebrating. And you know th those third and one stops, fourth and one stops, so those are huge. They're hard to come by uh, in any league. That's good defense. It is. It's great defense. And I just want to make sure that you know that everybody knows David was out there doing his job, and the corner and the safety were. We're tight there, so he couldn't just you know rip a slant in there on third and one. Harold is relentless. He plays hard. He he does play hard. All right, so let's take a look at relentless. Fourth and goal at the one. It's 31-19. The Jaguars are going to try to get it in here with the big back, Carlos Hyde. No. Just want to mention though, Kevin Byard's effort on the play before was the quarterback draw. Uh, he kind of came out of the post, ran around, quarterback changed direction. But then on this, you know, we just we lined up, we put our cleats in the ground, and you know, it starts with Tier Tart getting the penetration, chasing him outside, Chris Jackson replacing when his guy blocked, and you know, making a great tackle, not diving at, at a big back, but taking a big back up high, and then everybody comes, and you know, there's a lot of cool shots of this, and guys are running, and guys are excited, and you know, you just you don't stop teams that much on 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 the six inch line. You live for that. Look at that. Yeah, that that's really some cool shots there, guys being excited and and getting into it. I, I know the defense hasn't been perfect, but there are more good signs than last year. Are you really optimistic about yeah. this group growing? No, I am. I just, I just, you know, there was just a lot of 
technique and fundamental things that I think that that have to be better. And we're just not giving people things. And uh, there is a lot of good things. I just, you know, I, you know we, we, we had some penalties there that cost us so a third down. There was a penalty that it gave them a first couple penalties that gave them a first down. And uh, there's a lot of missed tackles that they have to get cleaned up. But there's a lot of good things in there on third down in the red zone. So I'm real excited. All right, are you ready for Delta Dental? Let's go. Okay, he's in a good mood because he's just seen a goal line stand. He's been red hot at the De Delta Dental. Can you guess this Titan? Let's see if he stays on the hot streak. Can we see this week's contestant, please? Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. How are we feeling? Fair to Midland. Fair to Midland. Well, you get a break here. So let's take that break. A pause for the cause, so to speak, on the Mike Vrabel Show. Delta Dental, can you guess this mm. Titan? We'll see if the head coach can. <laughs> Many quizzical looks during the break. I'm not real confident about this not, one, Mike. He's not feeling great. The Delta Dental, can you guess this Titan, Mike Vrabel? I think Delta Dental is going to win. I think they're going to win this week. I think that is Jeremy McNichols. Jeremy McNichols. That's an interesting guess. I would go with Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson, obvious choice. He had a good game. I was going to say Nate Davis, so I wouldn't have had yeah. No, I knew it wasn't Nate Davis. Okay, so let's talk about Marcus Johnson for a second. Marcus Johnson's a guy that the Titans pick up right before the playoff game last year. You re-sign him in the offseason. It's a really good camp and then gets hurt. Yeah, frustrating camp. He did do um, some really cool things. He was only here for, for a little short time, but but I, you know, we all thought he had a, a really nice skill set and um, had a good offseason, had a, had, a, had a really good camp and put himself in a position to try to help this football team. And unfortunately, you know, he got hurt. You know, he took a lot of reps. You know, there was a lot of guys out and, you know, he, he was always out there. And that's why he probably got better. It's why he got gained the trust of the quarterback um, and so now we, we brought him back and he you know he practiced last week and then we were able to bring him up this week and he started and had some big conversions on third down had a, a couple catch and runs and, and and really had a good game for us it had a couple nice blocks it's built a little bit like AJ Brown he's 6 one he's roughly 210 pounds Ran 4.39 coming out of Texas. He's got some wheels. Yeah, you know, he, he's not – he's different than A.J. Okay. He's not as big. You know, I mean, A.J. is a, is a much thicker player and, and, and just a stronger player. I think, you know, Marcus runs really good routes. You know, he's a good route runner. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was encouraged. Three catches, 52 yards for Marcus Johnson in the ballgame. Certainly going to be able to help the Titans more as the year goes on. Excited to have him. And, Several guys stepping up and doing good things. Chester Rogers is another one who's played awfully well. Absolutely, and he's helped us in a return game. And not only the returning them, but going up and catching these bad punts that some of these guys have sometimes. All right, so when we come back, the Titans files. Taylor LeGuan is your narrator talking about his favorite player on the roster. See who number 77 tells us about. LeJuan can talk, and he can certainly talk about a variety of things. But in this Titans Files edition with Amy Wells, Taylor LeJuan takes the time to talk about his favorite Titan, somebody that he's played with for several years. Ask any Titans player who the top three leaders on this team are, and you will be shocked if center Ben Jones isn't mentioned on every man's list. Now in his 10th season overall and his sixth with the Tennessee Titans, Jones has appeared in over 150 games with more than 130 career starts. How can we illustrate Ben Jones' impact on the organization? When asked about his offensive lineman teammate, Taylor Lewan had no problem being totally serious. Ben Jones is glue. That's really what this guy is. I remember sitting in Arizona, I was in Paradise Valley, and I got a DM from like this random Instagram and it was Ben Jones saying he's excited to play with me and he can't wait to get to work together. And I didn't know what to think of it, you know, cause I didn't, being early in the league, I didn't know. 
you know, who really Ben was. From there, Ben's been a guy that keeps the camaraderie in our offensive line room so strong. He is a guy that obviously produces on the field, but in the locker room when you're with him, he takes guys that are from inner city, from the country, from all over different parts of the country and brings us all together in such a good way. He's hardworking, he's a humble guy. He's a guy that sits in the background and maybe doesn't get enough credit that he deserves. And I think this team, when it's all said and done, are gonna be really appreciative of what he's done for this team. And even when he retires, he might still be around. That's how good of a football mind he is. Taylor Lewan describes Ben Jones and what he means to the Titans perfectly. But don't overlook the fact that Jones is really good at what he does as a center. The leadership stuff doesn't work if you can't back it up with your play. But Ben Jones' biggest strength may be his temperament. I think Ben Jones is a good football player because it's a level of consistency that he's been able to obtain that's very difficult to do. When you have a guy like Ben, day in and day out the same guy, whether he's on the field or in the locker room, you're gonna get Ben Jones. I think that's overlooked a lot in the NFL. Everyone loves really flashy stuff and you know pulls that blow up guys and all, all these different things at the offensive line category. Ben goes in, he plays every single snap of every game, he plays every game, he will be hurt, he'll be injured, he'll keep going. He puts the same product in the field every single time. He doesn't come in super high or super low any day. I mean, obviously when you're in camp, days hurt more than others. That's just how it works. But Ben has an unmeasurable ability to, you know, compartmentalize those things and just go back to work every single day. Ben Jones is not young anymore, and battling injuries is not new for him. But he loves to play the game, loves to compete, and to spend time with the guys. The offensive linemen, yes, but you will constantly see Jones with skill players and defensive players, too. The craft of being an NFL offensive lineman is a point of pride to Ben Jones, a point not lost on Taylor Lewan. You can see the way he holds pride in making his family prideful of what he does. It's not just the way he plays the game, it's the way he handles himself off the field. And yeah, when we're in the meeting room, Ben jokes, it's fun, but he knows when to tail it back. He knows like he does a good job of not just being the jokester all the time. He's very professional at the same time. We welcome you back to the Mike Vrabel Show final segment. We're gonna talk about the Buffalo game in a second, but Tater Lewan talking about Ben Jones, a favorite player of a lot of Titans. Yeah, I would say of, of a lot of the coaches and, you know, a lot of the players and, and his inspiration. But, you know, those guys have been together, um, you know, probably five years on the offensive line. And, and that's a lot of time to, to be teammates together. And, um, you know, they were together before we got here as, as, a, as, a, as a coaching staff. And, you know, I, I know that uh, Ben has been the, the, the glue in that room. And, and they have very different personalities. But uh, and that's what makes everybody unique. And. Uh, they played a lot of football for us, a lot of winning football for us, those two guys. All right, let's talk about winning football against the Bills. Six days from now, Monday night football at Nissan Stadium. Keys to the game brought to you by Nissan. And let's talk about fundamentally sound defense. You're talking about tackling better, first of all? Yeah, taking on blocks. You know what I mean? Like you watch a defensive player, you should have your hands inside. You should have separation. You know, we should be able to shed, you know, those things that, that we work on. You know, we just can't, uh, you know, not we have, we can't let them lag here once we once we get into the season. Communication, tackling, staying on our feet, uh, not diving, uh, playing with good leverage, playing square and pass coverage, and you know those are things that are critical and, and that we're going to focus on this week. Nissan key number two is about protecting the ball. Yeah, and that it's huge every week, but but this defense, I think that they forced. Uh, upwards of 15 turnovers. I mean, I think it's something ridiculous. Um, however many, they had four the last couple nights ago and five before that. And I mean, they just, they attack, they put pressure on the quarterback uh, and, and they get it out. You know, they intercept it, they hammer it out. So it, they, that'll be critical, our ability to take care of the football. Yeah, Buffalo plus 11 in turnover ratio. Nissan key number three, return game. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we get some opportunities to, to, to return to football. You know, we've been putting a lot of work in the kickoff return. We didn't get any opportunities um, th this past weekend, and you know, we're pretty confident that we will. And you know, in the punt game, hopefully we can make them punt more than the, the two times we did last week. But uh, we've had a lot of confidence in that punt return unit as well to get check going. I cannot wait for Monday Night Football. It never gets old. We're, we're a long way from there, but I know we'll be excited and, 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 and really 
um, to, wanting to get out there on a, on a big stage and, and play well. Against a team you will have, you will have now seen four years in a row. Yeah, and, and, a, and a huge challenge. You know, it's a good football team. They're, they're talented and well coached. All right, so we'll let you know that Titans Radio will have it on 104.5 The Zone in Nashville and our Titans radio stations around the region. We're on the air at 6 o'clock with Titans Countdown. Kickoff is set for 7.15, Titans and the Bills, six days from now on Monday Night Football. For Mike Grable, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Grable Show.